Okay. <clears throat> so like John was talking about, it's a uh, FIM 360 is a platform that's based on an iPad, iOS, or desktop app. Right now I'm in the desktop app, running on Windows. Um, I'm in a, an example here, just, just for the demo purposes. Um, I actually, this is a workflow just to kind of go through, uh, basically the module itself. Um, there's two parts of this. One, in, that's individual models. Uh, that could be an architectural file, MEP, or structural, or fire protection, or whatever it may be. Um, and then you also have a merge model. That merge model is a selection of however the user wants to basically combine them. So if I want to have the architecture and MEP combined, or I want them all combined, I can do that. And that's basically just me clicking on new merge model to create a new one. Again, I have the option to actually open up individual models, architectural, MEP, structural. Um, this is for an example. Um, over on the right-hand side, I always have an activities. I can always see what, you know, per user. So if it's myself or you know, our coworker or uh, you know another co consultant that I'm working with, and he's made a markup or he or she, you know, uh, created a new view. Um, I can always see what is actually being currently done on the project. Now, for an example, just to show over just different, uh, this is BIM 360 Blue. Now, within the Autodesk suite of products, I'm just going to open up Revit for an example. Um, you'll have an add-ins uh, tab, and then there's a glue button here. Once I click glue utilize the model itself, and I can select uh, where I'm going to be um, sending this model, which project, and it basically automatically syncs it. This minimizes for me saving the Revit file onto an FTP site or A360 or OneDrive or Dropbox. Um, I always have just a one click, I send my model up, and I'm good to go. And this is just an example for architecture, but there'd be, this would be done through the same way with MEP consultants or fire protection. Um, they all utilize one location, which is BIM 360. Okay. So I'm going to open up an actual merged file here. This is actually a merge of an architectural and MEP file. <clears throat> and I'm going to open that up. Now this is, again, remember this is the desktop app. Okay, running on Windows. So I can actually see uh, the data that's all combined. So I have the MEP file and architectural. Now on the left hand side, I have basically a couple of tools here. I have measure, models, views, and I'm going to go through these just to kind of give you a little more of a detail, just a finer look at them. Um, <clears throat> but before we even get dive into this, I'm going to go over the example of models. If I click on models, it allows you to display what one, what models are currently loaded into this merged model. So currently, I know that there's an architectural file and an MEP file, okay, and I can turn them off if I want to. Um, if need be, uh, through the coordination process. I can also go a little further down. I can turn off doors, curtain walls. Um, pretty easy. Nothing, you know, nothing really that difficult. The reason why that is because, you know, during construction and pre-construction, all the way through construction, we don't really want this really um, clunky software. We want to really, really streamline uh, how we actually minimize risk. Okay, with models, okay, and I can do that within here. At any given point with the merge model, I can add in additional models if I needed to. Okay, so it's not like I have to create a new merge model with three other ones. Okay, I can always add to them. Okay, and this is an example of the model itself. Okay, um, as an example, this is the desktop app. I'm going to jump over to the iPad here, and I'm going to go into this file just to show you. Okay. So this is on the iPad, and I can click on it, and I can go into the actual glue uh, model itself. Now, this may be me being in a meeting, or I'm out on site, or I could be home, or in the office. Um, I'm all, I always have access to my BIM data. Now, this is a really uh, key thing to remember. Uh, BIM 360 glue is model elements only. So you're not going to see, like, the drawings or the drawing sheets that you would. Um, that's more tailored toward BIM 360 docs. Okay. So BIM 36 Blue, again, you're only seeing the live data uh, for, let me put that back, the live BIM data, okay? This is on the iPad. I can just pinch and zoom um, using my, my hand here, and I can move around and, and zoom in on, on given areas, okay? And this is the iPad app. There's really not, you know, uh, there is different functionality within the iPad app that's different than the desktop app, such as clashing, 
running class reports. Um, <clears throat> a little different. If I jump back to the desktop app, okay, just to go through this, um, I have different tabs here. I have measure. So again, I'm, I can go point to point, shortest distance. So if I do shortest distance, I click that wall and this wall. It will give me the shortest distance between those two walls. I know dynamically by just clicking on two elements and it will display the shortest distance. If I want to, I can save this as a markup. Okay. Now what's really important with BIM 360, okay, if I go and view these markups that are in my project, okay, so this is markup seven moments ago. I have the option to edit this also. So I can go ahead and add text. I can draw on this, okay, using a mouse uh, line. You know, I can actually set different colors also. And more importantly, as we think about communication within the team, um, I have an option here uh, next to that little pencil tip. There's a little notify button. If I choose to not notify someone, I can click on there and notify someone. So this is a markup. I need you to look at this. I'll go ahead and notify that one person on the team, notifies it, and it's a given email. So they would receive it in their email inbox. Okay. So that is side of markups. Now within markups, you can create folders for RFI, change orders, whatever it may be, but they would be pertaining to the actual markup that you do on the actual project. Okay. And these are just some examples here. Okay. Close this. <clears throat> now, within views, okay, there's two sets of views within Glue, just to kind of just so everybody can kind of get an idea of actually how this works. If I create a view, I can either have it just myself can view that, or if I want to share my view that I'm looking at with an entire team, I can create that as well. You'll notice that there's two tabs, one that says shared views and one that says my views. And I can create different views uh, per you know, whatever the circumstance may be. <clears throat> Again, I'm on the desktop app. Now I'm going to jump back and show you the iPad. So again, it's kind of the same thing. Um, I'm on the iPad. I can do shortest distance as well. So this is, again, me being in a meeting or out on site, and I want to verify sort of a couple of things. So I'm going to include, uh, select shortest distance, select that wall, and that wall. And then basically on the iPad app, what you'll notice is it kind of grays out and it kind of like enables a section box for those who are familiar with, uh, with Revit. Um, it kind of gives you like a temporary section box of the given area of wherever that temporary dimension is being assigned. <clears throat> now if I zoom in, um, I can do that. The only thing that's different is I cannot create a markup within here on that dimension. Okay, it's a little different. Um, <clears throat> now I can do point to point if I wanted to. Okay, it's pretty simple. Now within actually the, the measurement itself, um, I can always jump back and hit done clear it out, and I can actually go right into the iPad <clears throat> and view my current views. So whatever views I'm sharing with my team on the desktop app, okay, they will also be conveyed over on the iPad. Okay. So if I have to call someone up and say, hey, you know, I, I, have a, I have a view in here. It's under shared views. Can you take a look at this? Is this, is this correct? Is this how it's supposed to be constructed? Do we have to kind of follow up? You know, I have a better location. I can just point the person to the right location, uh, to the right view. Okay, because everybody is sharing that view. Now, if I go to shared views, I can go remember I have a meeting room. Okay, view duct area. Yeah, this is just examples. Okay, but I'm leveraging BIM data to as a visual instead of just a 2D document. Okay. Close this. Now, the, the hide models are also a functionality within the iPad app. I can go ahead and turn off architecture and AV, okay. or all of the above. 